Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is the image characteristics of plane mirrors, and we wish to know how would you describe those images that are produced by a plane or a flat mirror. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The first characteristic that we'll talk about has to do with the location of the image. The principle is that the image is located as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. We often use this principle in order to locate the image of an object. Here you see an object in a mirror. The object's marked O and the mirror is marked M. I can put down a centimeter ruler and measure from the object to the mirror. The image will be the same distance on the other side of the mirror. When I put my ruler down, I'm going to measure from the center of the object to the mirror and it ends up being about 4.0 centimeters. I measure out the other side the same distance. I draw my image in at the 8 centimeter mark, 4 centimeters from the mirror, and I have found the image of the object. Sometimes the object itself isn't a point but instead is an arrow or a line. In such instances as this you have to do the process twice, once for the top extreme and once for the bottom extreme of the arrow. So I put down my centimeter ruler and I measure from the top extreme to the mirror, it's about four centimeters, and then out the other side another four centimeters, and I put a dot. I repeat the process for the bottom extreme. I measure from the bottom of the arrow to the mirror, it's about two and a half centimeters, and out the other side the same distance, and I put a second dot. When I'm done, I can draw in the complete image of this object arrow, it ends up being an image arrow. Now sometimes you don't have a dot and you don't have a, an arrow, and instead you have something like a square or a diamond or a triangle, uh, something like this. So the process goes much the same. Uh, a diamond has four extremes, so you mark the four extremes on the diamond, and then you use a centimeter ruler to determine the location of the four of the images of these four extremes, and then you draw in the complete image. The second characteristic of plane mirror images has to do with size. The size of the image is exactly the same as the size of the object. Suppose we consider a two foot tall object that's placed five meters from the mirror. The size of the object is two feet and the, the distance is five meters. If we looked at the image we would observe that it's five meters behind the mirror placing it ten meters from the object itself and it's also two feet tall. If we wanted to represent this in terms of symbols we might say that the D object equal the negative of the D image. The negative is there because the object's on the positive side of the mirror and the image is on the negative side of the mirror. We could also write that the h of the object, the height of the object, equal the height of the image. There's an experiment that's often done to illustrate this idea that it uses two different eye charts and a plane mirror. You hold the plane mirror, you hold the eye chart up in front of the plane mirror and you, you position it just perfect so you can see the image. Then you have a friend take a second identical eye chart of exactly the same size and begin to walk it away from you. You inspect that second eye chart and compare its size to the size of the image that you see in the mirror. Now the image appears smaller only because it's 10 meters away from you. But if you continue to move that object backwards, that second eye chart backwards, what you would begin to see is that once you get it to the mirror location that it's actually larger than the image itself. If you keep moving it backwards, finally you can match the size of the of that second eye chart to the size of the image of the eye chart and that happens when you're as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. So the h of the image is equal to the h of the object and you can prove it if you place the second identically sized eye chart exactly as far behind the mirror as the object is in front. In a previous video, this one, I discussed what an image is. I've left a link to the video in the description section below if you need to review it. Cliff notes from the video go like this. An image is a replica or a representation of an object that appears at a location in space where it would seem to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. In this animation, we have three students sitting in front of a mirror. There's an object there and each student is sighting at the object but each student is sighting along a different line of sight. What's true of every line of sight is that there's a reflected ray that bounces off the mirror to the observer's eye. If we take these reflected rays and we trace them backwards behind the mirror, what we would observe is that every one of these reflected rays, or line of sight, would intersect at the same location. We refer to that location as the image location. For plain mirrors, these types of images are called virtual images. Images of mirrors can be one of two types, real or virtual images. We'll discuss 
real images at a later time when we begin to discuss curved mirrors. But for plane mirrors, the virtual image is always located behind the mirror. It's formed whenever you have reflected rays traveling away from each other or diverging after they reflect off the mirror. It's located at a point in space where light does not actually reach. If you went behind the mirror searching for some light, you wouldn't find any light back there. The light's reflected off the mirror, not passed through it. And, and virtual images are always the images that are formed by a plane mirror. The last characteristic of plane mirror images is the idea of the appearance of left to right reversal. For instance, if you wore a shirt and it had some lettering on it, and you looked in the mirror, you would notice that the word was written backwards and that the letters were turned around, as though the mirror has flipped the letters. But they haven't. Well, yeah, sure, you look in the mirror and you do notice that the word is written backwards and that the letters have been reversed, but don't blame the mirror for that one. Let me explain. Let's suppose I wear a shirt with my favorite word on it, physics, and then I turn and I look in the mirror and sure enough, there would be the word physics written backwards, letters reversed. What's going on? Well, if I could somehow take those letters off my shirt and put them in front of me what, and then look at the letters on my shirt that used to be on my shirt, they would be written backwards with the letters reversed. It was like that all the time. From my perspective as one looking at the mirror, the object itself had reversed lettering. It's a frame of reference issue. If someone else stands at the mirror location and looks back away from the mirror and at me, the letters don't look reversed. But from my frame of reference, looking at the letters on my shirt, it, the word is spelled backwards and the letters reversed. So we don't blame the mirror for this because it was like that all the time. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Here's your action plan. Here's three resources, each one of which can be found on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. We have an interactive simulation, a Minds on Physics questioning module, and a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.